Okay, so today I would like to cover with you guys um, the Act 2, um, Helen Keller. Today we're going to be conducting a review on, on Act 2, and uh, hopefully uh, also that you guys have read Act 2 uh, on your own and, uh, you know, uh, made uh, recognition of Annie's accomplishments. Act 1 ended when uh, Annie was very determined that she was going to make sure that Helen does not have her way. She thinks that also uh, that her parents are spoiling her, okay, and that they should be more uh, strict with her. They should not allow her to get away with everything and they should make her fall. Waited at or the residence. She's living with the Kellers in the house. They've provided her with a room. And Annie is going to be staying with her in that room. Okay. And uh, also we saw uh, the idea of uh, 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 Annie wants Helen. Uh, basically, it says that uh, she is writing a letter and she's writing it to, uh, um, uh, we assume that she's writing it to an Agnes because he is her mentor. And uh, we see here that she's writing this letter and uh, she's basically saying in this letter that she is, uh, um, you know, frustrated and finding it very difficult to be in the Keller's household and dealing with Annie because Annie is not disciplined. Uh, uh, Helen is not disciplined at all. And she claims... Part right here, she says, I would like to. Uh, tough love to be tough on her, but at the same time, uh, without uh, Helen uh, being scared, okay. And uh, uh, we see here that uh, at one point, uh, Helen uh, knocks out the ink, okay, the ink bottle or the ink well that she's using. And uh, we see also that Annie takes every single advantage of every single situation to teach Helen something. When the ink drops or falls, uh, we see that Helen, uh, uh, you know, you know, she doesn't understand what she did or that the spillage of the ink, okay? She doesn't understand the spillage. Uh, what Annie does is that she takes her hand and she places it into the ink and she starts to write the words ink, I-N-K. She starts to spell it into the palm of her hand. Uh, again, this is Annie's way of teaching her that every object has a name, okay? This is the purpose of what we're doing is that she wants to teach her that every object has a name, okay? So uh, she successfully does that. Okay. Uh, we also see that, uh, uh, you know, Annie wants to keep Helen entertained. So she gives her a needle uh, and thread and a sewing card. Okay. Uh, and she teaches her how to work it. Okay. And Helen is successfully uh, sewing with the needle and thread into a card or a sewing card. And uh, uh, of course, here she's going down and up and under. She's very careful with the needle uh, and she's doing fine. Okay, so uh, um, when she returns to uh, uh, writing her letter, uh, we see here that Helen uh, did something. Okay, she has, uh, she's interrupted. Helen has stuck her finger and sits sucking at it darkly. Then with vengefulness, uh, she seizes her doll. So again, we see here that uh, uh, Helen gets angry because she pricks her finger with the needle. Okay, she, uh, she kind of like hurts herself. What does she do? She takes out all her temper.
war, okay? Uh, so this is very aggressive, and uh, uh, this is how she's coping with the pain. Now, this is definitely uh, not the way that she should deal with things, okay? She's giving into these tantrums. We saw from the beginning that we see that uh, she is, uh, she does have these or throws these tantrums, and uh, Annie wants her to break out of it. At this part is very important uh, here uh, because this is Annie's way of teaching Helen how to uh, become a good girl. All right, and uh, there's a study guide on these questions uh, on this on the specific part uh, where how does she show her good girl behavior? How does she show her bad girl behavior? And she demonstrates that with the doll. All right, Annie demonstrates it with how she should deal with the doll. She picks up the doll, she smashes it on the floor, and uh, you know she tells, she shows her. She takes uh, Annie's uh, Helen's hand. She shows uh, her, or she makes her feel her face, and her face is like frowning. Okay, this is bad girl behavior, and she spells the word bad girl into her hand, uh, saying pretty much that if you do this to your doll, this is bad girl. Uh, on the other hand, she takes the, the doll and she caresses it. Uh, to caress it means to hold it carefully and slowly. She kisses the doll where it, the doll is hurt and she teaches her, uh, she shows her that her face is actually smiling. All right, that means that she is happy with her behavior if she does that. And she writes the word good girl into the palm of her hand. Okay, so here she is. This is uh, uh, Annie's way of teaching Helen uh, what is good girl behavior and what is bad girl behavior using the doll. We see here Kate comes in uh, and she sees what Annie is doing with the writing and she doesn't understand it. Okay, uh, she says, uh, and we see, of course, that also uh, 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 Annie speaks to Helen using words. Like here, if you look here, she tells her, and be careful of the needle. So, of course, giving her instructions uh, vocally and verbally, uh, when Kate sees that, she asks uh, Helen, you know, why are you speaking to her, you know, uh, and, you know, uh, of course, we know Helen Keller is also deaf. So uh, Kate is shocked that why is Annie speaking to a deaf child? She's not going to hear you. And Annie gives her a very uh, good response, and she basically tells her uh, the same way that you speak to Mildred. And if you guys remember, Mildred is Annie's little sister, okay, and, uh, Helen's little sister, uh, Kate's second child. And we know that everything is okay with Mildred. So uh, uh, what Annie tells her is that when you teach Mildred, when you try to teach Mildred how to talk, uh, babies talk gibberish. Uh, gibberish is like baby talk, when their talk doesn't make any sense, okay? So this is what Annie is doing. Annie is uh, speaking to Helen, uh, trying to teach her language the same way that they would speak to a normal baby. Because again, Annie is not treating Helen as an impaired or a sick child. She's treating her like a normal one. Okay. And uh, uh, Kate is asking her, what are you spelling into her name or what can she spell? Uh, uh, Helen demonstrates and shows that she's capable of spelling the word cake. But does she know what that is? Can she associate cake with an object? Not yet. Okay. So uh, Annie first wants her to learn the alphabet, learn and the spelling of these words, uh, get used to these, uh, to memorize these movements of the letters into her hand. And then later she's going to worry about teaching her that each object is related to a word okay we see that kate is excited and she also wants to learn these words okay she asks uh annie that she uh wants her to teach her some of these letters so that they could help each other okay that kate could also help her with uh, helen uh kate uh, mentions that it's helen's bedtime that helen should be going to sleep Annie is trying to take away the needle card and the needle or the sewing card from Helen, but of course Helen is very aggravated, okay, uh, and what does she do? Helen takes the needle and she uh, stabs uh, Annie with it in her hand, okay? Now, of course, uh, Annie is in so much pain, she's hurt, uh, but what does mom do? Uh, what does mom do? What mom does, what Kate does is that she gives Helen candy. Okay, she gives her sweets. Uh, after she wounded uh, or she hurt Annie, we see that Kate gives her sweets. 
and she طبعا apologizes to Miss Annie. She tells her I'm sorry uh, for uh, for Helen's behavior. But of course, Annie here is even more uh, upset or more angry. Why? Because of course, she thinks that she should not be getting candy. We saw candy in Act 1 and we said that candy is a way uh, for the Kellers to deal with her anger. It's the way that the Kellers um, calm down Helen when she's angry and frustrated. Uh, so this is just a technique that they use. Uh, and Annie wants to break this technique because uh, every time she gets candy, what is candy telling her? That you did something good. Okay, usually candy is a reward for children uh, when they do something positive, not when they do something bad. All right, so Helen here is upset because, you know, uh, she asks Katie, you know, did you give her uh, candy? Did you reward her for stabbing me? And Annie uh, says, uh, Kate here uses a, a, a good uh, a, a something, and she says, uh, we catch our flies with honey. So basically, uh, in order to calm her down, they're giving her, uh, they're giving her candy, just like when we want to catch our flies, we give them honey. Okay, and Annie says, this is not correct, that obedience uh, needs is the gateway through which knowledge enters the mind of the child. If a child is not obedient, that means listens and follows instructions and uh, understands what to do uh, without acting out and being, uh, being, uh, being uh, uh, you know, uh, disobedient, then there's no learning. Okay, so first, Annie really wants to teach Helen to be obedient, to listen and to follow. Okay, uh, uh, then we move on to breakfast. Uh, this is a big uh, scene that we discussed previously also. Over breakfast, we see that James, uh, which is Helen's half-brother, he's Keller's uh, son from his first wife. Uh, and Mr. Keller, they're talking about World War, uh, uh, they're sorry, they're talking about the Civil War between the North and the South. Uh, and of course, we know that the South lost. So they're discussing a, a battle called the uh, Vicksburg uh, uh, battle. And uh, it was when Mississippi was attacked during the Civil War. So they're talking and discussing basically uh, issues and the discussion is over the Civil War and uh, how the South lost and so on. And here we see that the women are silent and uh, what Annie uh, is doing, she's also silent with, Ka with Kate, they're silent and they are watching while Annie is, she is st studying Helen's behavior over the breakfast table. Okay, and uh, does anyone remember how her, how her, uh, how her behavior was over uh, the breakfast table? Anyone uh, from here, you guys remember? Well, her behavior was very uh, strange, okay? Her behavior is uh, that she was basically moving her hand from plate to plate, grabbing uh, everyone's food, okay? Grabbing everyone's food, all right? Uh, uh, and she was eating from everyone's plate, and they were basically letting her do that. Okay, they were basically letting her get away with touching everyone's food and everyone's plate, uh, just uh, being very, very, uh, 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 you know, disrespectful. And this is not supposed to be happening. And all the adults are allowing her to do it because, of course, they want peace of mind. They don't want to be troubled uh, by telling her yes or no. The only person that stops her uh, is Annie. When she tries to go and grab Annie's food from her plate, this is when Annie says, no. Okay, she says, no, you are not eating from my food. Uh, uh, and she stops her. Of course, Helen gets frustrated because she wants to eat from her plate, uh, just like everybody else's. Okay, but Annie is determined to say no. Of course, we see the adults are uh, blaming Helen for her behavior.
sorry guys i just figured out that i was muted okay so basically here mr keller is arguing with annie because what he wants her to do is allow her to eat the food Okay, she wants to, uh, you know, just let her get away with it. Let her this time. We'll get you another plate. And of course, here it's not about getting another plate. Annie is trying to make a point of, uh, of doing what, of actually, uh, uh, uh basically. She doesn't want to, uh, she doesn't want any, uh, Helen does not want any to do this. Period. All right, she does not want to, uh, um, to. She doesn't want her to do this behavior. She wants her behavior to be different, okay? Better behavior, all right? And here we see that uh, Annie gets uh, very aggravated with Mr. Keller. She speaks to him in a very rude way. She gets loud with him. She gives him the order of leaving. Uh, she wants them to all leave the dining room table and to just basically to be with Helen alone, okay? And that this is her time to teach her a lesson, okay? This is her time to teach her a lesson. And uh, what lesson is she gonna teach her is that she wants to teach her to eat from her plate and she wants to teach her to eat with a spoon or a fork depending and without her hands mr keller of course says that you need to have pity okay you need to have pity on your students uh and ba basically pity means to feel sorry for her and annie says i do not feel sorry for her she's not going she refuses to treat her this way because again this is not how uh, it should be done okay she wants to discipline her and treat her like a normal child okay this is a picture that shows of course uh the conflict it's going to get very very serious and very uh, a very harsh conflict between uh, both helen and katie as all the adults leave and they're all left in the uh the dining room table by themselves Mr. Keller and Kate and his wife, uh, he has a word with her. First of all, Mr. Keller is fed up. He is unhappy with the way that Mrs. Uh, that Mrs. Uh, Salvian or Annie Salvian is speaking to him. Remember, he's not used to getting orders from women, especially that he's a very strict male figure. He's in charge of the house and he feels that he needs to make all the decisions and everyone needs to follow him. Uh, especially that Annie is a Yankee. And remember the word Yankee refers to the idea of... Uh, of being a woman from the north and he's a southern man so here it's very hard for him to accept uh, 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 that Helen is giving him instructions I mean that Annie is giving him instructions okay so he is not accepting this at all uh, another thing that we need to understand is that Mr. Keller tells Kate that he wants her to leave okay he wants Annie out of the house all right to basically to send her back to uh, uh, Boston, and he no longer wants to give her the job, okay, of being Helen's caregiver or her governess. Of course, Kate is very reluctant. He tells her that he wants her to go and tell Kate, and to tell uh, basically Kate that she is fired, that she is no longer needed in the house. Of course, Kate does not want to do that. And uh, she basically tells the captain, uh, you know, that that basically they should wait and see. Now, during this uh, entire uh, stage directions, we see a very harsh conflict between Helen and Annie. It gets physical. They actually, uh, she actually uh, smacks her, slaps her, tries to sit her down. Helen refuses to, to sit down. She gets up. Uh, Helen picks her back up and forces her to sit down. Um, again, the chairs are knocked down. Uh, plates are thrown. Every, it's just a mess. It's, a cha it's chaos. The dining room table is a mess. Uh, a lot of uh, chairs are turned upside down. Um, everything is just very messy, very chaotic. However, uh, we see good results that finally... Uh, Helen is able to eat with the spoon. Okay, so she uh, she learns two things out of this entire conflict. We learn uh, again. We can tell here how vicious and how uh, how uh, violent they both got with each other. Okay, um, but Annie put up with it because Annie has a goal that she wants to accomplish, and she does. Okay, uh, finally, when Vinnie comes in, uh, she sees the room very messy. 
uh, she comes to take the breakfast dishes. And finally, uh, they hear, we see that, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, they are saying that, um, you know, uh, Annie and Kate have a discussion. And Annie tells her, uh, well, you know what? Uh, you know, we have an accomplishment. What happened? She tells her that she ate finally from her own plate. And she tells her also that she was able to fold from a and to fold her napkin. So did Annie accomplish something positive after all this struggle? Yes, she did. Okay. And these are the two accomplishments that she went through. Of course, she mentions that the room is a wreck. That means, of course, that the room is um, messy uh, due to the fact, of course, that uh, uh, um, they were they had a very violent and uh, violent uh, attacks on one another. And Kate was trying to, uh, and Helen was trying to escape the room, okay? But we know that Annie had the door locked and she had the key hidden, all right? Um, um, uh, then we see, we move on uh, more, okay? Uh, we see here that, uh, again, Helen is, uh, I mean, Annie, again, is uh, reminded of her brother, Jimmy. Remember, she's taunted by him because he died uh, and she feels responsible for his death, okay? Because she had, she feels that she should have been there for him more, okay? And offered him more help, all right? Uh, here, uh, we see that the crones or the people from the poor people's institution where, uh, or the asylum where she was uh, raised, they're basically telling her that they she, she, that she should go get cured uh, because they have tea at schools now, uh, referring to the Perkins Institute. Uh, that um, that uh, you know that where she could go and get uh, cured her eyesight. Okay, and um, they're basically suggesting that they should she should go to learn uh, because there are schools uh, that basically teach the blind children to read and write. So this is how Helen. Uh, this is how Annie gets the idea of going. Of course, here she's reminded of the part where the doctors tell her that your brother will be going on a journey. That means that her brother is basically dying. Okay, so she's reminded of his death one more time. Okay, and here, of course, Jimmy's saying, "Annie, Annie," he's calling for her help. Okay, so um, uh, next, the next uh, thing that we see here is the Mr. Keller and Kate. Uh, are discussing. Uh, Kate tells Keller uh, that uh, she should, uh, you know, that um, you know, uh, Helen has reached good, uh, uh, good uh, uh, feedback. All right, uh, uh, that Kate got some good feedback from uh, from uh, from Annie, saying that Helen is now capable of cold folding her napkin, eating from her plate, and eating from a spoon. Okay, and this is all good things. All right, Mr. Keller, of course, says, uh, you know. Um, this is not what I want. You know, he's not really impressed. He's saying that eating from, uh, uh, that folding a napkin is not something so extraordinary. Okay, uh, here we see the part where uh, Annie comes in, uh, where Mr. Keller and Kate are speaking. She wants, uh, she has an idea. And what is her idea? Uh, she wants to take the uh, 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 basically the, um, the garden house and she wants to turn it into a room for her and Helen only. She wants to just be her and uh, her and Helen alone. She wants Helen to depend on Annie for everything. She doesn't want Annie, uh, Helen, sorry, to depend on anyone for anything else. Okay. So she is going to ask basically, uh, uh, for them to allow Helen to stay in, uh, to, to allow uh, 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 Annie and Helen together among with Percy. She's going to take Percy uh, to help her uh, in case she needed something because she's going to need a helping hand. Percy is the African-American child that is also uh, Helen's friend that plays with her in Act 1 in the beginning, if you guys remember. And she's going to basically uh, do that. Uh, Annie, uh, uh, Kate, Kate reminds uh, reminds her uh, that they uh, were actually thinking about sending her to an asylum, all right, for the mental uh, mental defectiveness. And Kate tells them, I mean, Annie tells them that this is not a good idea because uh, she herself lived in an asylum and it was terrible. All right, she tells them that there were rats. Uh, my brother and Jimmy used to play with rats. Um, um, 
um, you know, it was just terrible. This part is very important to read. She tells her this is where uh, um, basically uh, uh, Annie tells them or shares her experience about living in a, an asylum herself. Okay, uh, they talk about uh, here again, she tells them that she wants this uh, uh, garden house to stay with Helen, and they agree. Um, Mr. Keller gives her two weeks, okay, uh, two weeks, okay, you have two weeks inside this uh, garden house to make a miracle, okay, to make a miracle happen, basically to get some improvement out of Annie, or uh, out of Helen. And Annie accepts the challenge, all right, she's ready, uh, and they move her in uh, to this house, okay, to this garden house, alone with uh, with uh, Kate, okay, so it's all, I mean, alone with Annie, so it's only Annie, Helen, and Percy in this garden house, okay, um, of course, from the situation in the dining room table, uh, uh, um, Helen grows very afraid from Kate, uh, from from Annie. Uh, she doesn't want to go near her. Uh, she only wants to depend on her mother for everything. So, in order to make Kate, uh, or in order to make Helen confused and not understand where she is, uh, before they take her into the garden house, they take her for a two-hour ride uh, in random places so that she's lost and confused and doesn't know where she is. She thinks that she's in a very far place. She doesn't even know that she's home. Okay, so uh, here uh, we need to understand that they finally bring her and Annie uh, finally struggles uh, with her also inside the garden house because she wants to uh, get out uh, uh, of the farmhouse, uh, I mean out of the garden house, but of course the garden house is locked and it's a very also small place, it's not big like the house, all right, and here uh, Annie does not have any pity on her and she will uh, touch her. Every time uh, Kay, uh, Annie, by the way, touch, I mean, Helen, every time Helen touches her face, this is her way of saying that she wants her mother, okay? Uh, and, uh, you know, Helen uh, wants her mommy. Uh, she feels that she is in a, uh, a strange place, but Annie is not giving up, okay? She is not giving up, all right? Uh, and uh, act uh, 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 the act ends basically with that. And uh, today we're going to conduct this review in class that I just conducted with you guys. And starting, inshallah, tomorrow, uh, if you look at the weekly plan on starting on Tuesday, which is tomorrow, we're going to pick up act three, which is shorter. And this is going to be the last act. Uh, and it's going to be basically our conclusion or the resolution for the play of how uh, Annie's journey with Helen is going to end. Any question about act two? Any questions about Act 2? This is a good summary. Uh, today I'm going to conduct the same, uh, the same basically revision with the class. Uh, and they're, then they're going to the computer lab to type up their, uh, their papers. So I'm anticipating uh, you guys, your research papers to be handed in. Uh, you guys uh, uh, also uh, have a topic. You guys shared your topics with me. So don't forget your introduction paragraph should have a hook background information about your topic and your thesis statement uh your thesis statement should discuss the three not discuss just mention the three questions that you're going to be discussing in your in your body you should have done also your index cards where you do your research uh, from three different sources as i explained okay previously all right you should have three different sources if you have you have three body paragraphs your second your third and your fourth paragraphs should come uh, you should have a question for each paragraph and this question should be answered uh, from research okay and this research uh, answer should come from uh, bibliographies uh, they should come from biographies diaries articles magazines uh, websites that are trusted they should not be coming from wikipedia because wikipedia is not a trusted source and each question should have a different source okay when you hand in your essay you're going to also send me pictures of your index cards Okay, on how you paraphrase the information. Copy and paste is not going to be allowed. If you copy and paste anything from the internet, you will have zero because that is counted as plagiarism, as I explained previously. So in order, in order for me to ensure that you didn't plagiarize, I allowed the students time in the classroom to conduct research in the lab and paraphrase. That means to take the information and put it in their own words. So again, when you please hand in, hand in your three index cards showing the question at the top, your information in the middle, and your source at the bottom. 
If it's a book, I need the book title, the published date, who wrote it, the author. If it's a website, I need the link to the website. If it's a, a encyclopedia, tell me. But I need information, okay? I need these index cards handed in uh, uh, with your essay or even before. I'm still anticipating you guys to do that, okay? I'm still anticipating you guys uh, 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 to do that. Okay, so please, please hand in your three index cards, like I said, with question. The, each index card should have a question. The answer is paraphrased into your own words and the source. Each question should come from a different source. Finally, your conclusion paragraph is basically restating your thesis, restating your information, and giving us a, uh, a suggestion or a recommendation or your personal thoughts on the, on the topic that you discussed. Okay, today we're going to type it in class, uh, uh, MLA format, and we're going to hand it in. Okay, so uh, that's it for, uh, for that. Uh, uh, um, you guys took, uh, okay, Animal Farm, uh, chapter four, we, let, we read last week. Uh, I'm going to make a video discussing chapter four and chapter five for you guys, inshallah, on Wednesday, when we take uh, chapter five, I'm going to put chapter four and five together. Uh, so please do that. And also the vocab for act uh, two, I'm going to go over it tomorrow uh, with the class and I'll make a video for you. Okay, so any questions you guys have so far for act two? So today, uh, just worry about act two, know it well. Okay, I'm going to uh, upload uh, some discussion questions for act two that you guys should focus on answering. Also, I need you guys to focus on your essays and submit them by today. Today is a due date for the class. You guys can have by tomorrow if you need, okay, to get it done. Any questions? Okay, so if you submit it to me by today or tomorrow, I'm going to check them. And uh, uh, if it needs any editing needs to be done, I'll let you know and you guys can fix it. Okay, any questions before, uh, before we end our meeting? Guys, can you please talk? No, please. Thank you. Okay, guys. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Take care. I'll see you Thursday. Take care, guys. Bye.